Hello, my name is John. What we're going to be looking at is part two of creating procedural foliage inside of Unreal Engine 5. If you find this useful, please do like, subscribe and hit that bell as it really helps me out. And here we go. So previously in part one, if you haven't checked that out, you probably want to check that out first. It's not too long, but it explains how to set up procedural foliage inside of Unreal Engine and sort of an initial way of doing it. Um, what we're going to be looking at here is we're going to be looking at instanced foliage. So previously we looked at the, if we right click in here, go to foliage and active foliage. Now active foliage, what that allows us to do is we can actually sort of put blueprint scripts to this. So imagine if we wanted our player to go up to this tree and cut, be able to cut it down. So think of like an MMO where you've got like wood cutting stats and things like that. We can do that with this, but what this does is this obviously... Um, because we're placing these down, this can uh, create a, a big performance uh, hit, depending on what you're putting down. And um, what we're going to be looking at is instance foliage, which is when we right-click foliage, static mesh. This allows us to basically save resources um, within the system, but it means that the player can't interact it, act with it, so it's more just decoration which is how uh, really the, uh, the foliage tool works, is that's based off of instancing here. Um, so yeah, what we'll do is, again, if you haven't haven't seen this, you don't know what's going on, I would suggest that you, you pick uh, part one first, because it'll explain how to set up these volumes and that. So here we go. We're going to open up our uh, spawner here, and we're just going to delete what we've currently got and save. So if when we right-click here in the content browser, we'll go to foliage, Static mesh foliage. Now you can see here it's a static mesh foliage. It's a foliage type that uses mesh instancing. It's optimal for non-interactive foliage. And um, again, this is so going to help with our um, performance and things like that. So what I'm going to give it the prefix uh, static mesh foliage, so SMF. I'm going to name this tree. And then what we're going to do is we're going to double click on it. And you'll see up here that we've got our mesh um, icon. This will only allow us to put static meshes in, whereas the other one would allow us to put the active foliage, would allow us to put a blueprint in. So what we can do is we can go content, uh, models. So I've got some uh, example uh, meshes here. And save. And we'll come back to this in a minute. And what we're going to do then is go to our spawner. We're going to click this little plus here. We're going to locate where our static mesh tree is. And we're going to drag that in, and we're going to hit save. Always remember to hit save, and then I'm just going to drag this off to another screen, and we're going to locate our procedural foliage, foliage volume and hit re-simulate. So there we go. Straight away, we've got this very crowded forest here um, that's randomly procedurally generated. So now what we want to do is obviously we don't perhaps want it that, that intense, you know. Um, so what we can do here is open up our SMF tree, and we can scroll down and we can go to collision radius. So this is basically how close the trees are to each other before it will spawn another one. Um, so what we'll do is we'll say, well, we're gonna put this at 400. Again, always save, re-simulate. So you can see here now, we've got a more sort of natural forest. So we're gonna, we're gonna adjust it again, so I just want it a little bit denser. And um, so yeah, there we go. So we've got our little forest here. Um, what we can then do, is we're going to create some grass. So this all what I'm going to see, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this as if they were like shrubs rather than grass. Because what you do for grass is you actually use probably a landscape material um, that you attach so you can paint literally paint it down, and then anything that's say green will be grass and, and things like that. But that's that's another tutorial that we'll look at. Um, so but for this we're going to use this say as a, a weeds or something like that. So what we'll do is we'll click here again, then we'll right click in content, um, foliage, static mesh, and then SMF weed and we'll do a flower as well so foliage smf flower and so for the flower we will just go open that up locate our meshes uh, let's have a look what we go got a dandelion um, we'll put that in first just so we can see what's going on uh, so again drag that in when I hit spawn, uh, re-simulate, as you can see here, we're gonna get flowers everywhere now, but that's affected the trees. So what we need to do is we need to look at the collision radius and just turn that off. And that should allow us to have more trees and, uh, sorry, the same amount of trees and obviously the flowers as well. Obviously we can adjust this and, and, and things like that, but that's what we're gonna stick with for the minute. And then we're gonna go back to our um, weed one. We're gonna locate our grass or in this case, sorry, weed, and we're going to put that in, press save, I'm going to scroll down to the collision radius, press save, and I'm just going to re-simulate, 
So what have I done? I've done that. Right, I haven't added it to the spawner. So go to our spawner, click on the plus, add the weed in, press save, re-simulate, and now we've got these little weeds. Now what we can do is we want to say to make these weeds a little bit bigger. So we go to our weed, and what we can do here is where it says procedural scale, we can say five, seven. Then when we re-simulate this, we've got some giant weeds now. And um, as you can see here, it's affected our uh, trees and things like that. So you've got to bear this in mind when you it, you know you do some of this, it, it can be real trial and error um, of trying to get what you feel is right uh, for, for your scene and things like that. So you can see here when I've knocked the shade radius down, we're now getting some bigger clumps of weeds together. And um, you can see suddenly you, it could start coming together. You know, if we have some grass foliage on the ground and things like that, it's very quick. Very quickly you can see a whole scene coming together. Um, now one other thing that's really good about using the instances as well is that we can actually control the culling. So this allows us to basically say, well, if we were right back here, we don't necessarily need to see, say, these weeds all the way at the back there. It just helps performance on your computer. So what we can do is we can go to our weed and we can go to cull distance. And what we can do here is we can say, well, I only want anything within the view of the distance of 2000 is seen. So now what happens, as you can see, obviously this is quite um, abrupt. We don't necessarily want this, um, but it's just for the purposes of this tutorial. There we go, you can see what happens there. So what we can actually do is say, right, I'm gonna put that there say 5,000, 7,000, and then we're gonna to go to the flowers because we don't need to see those flowers. Exactly the same principle. We go to our flowers and say 5,000, and um, you can see, oh, that's 5,000, 5, there we go. And you can see now it looks more, you know, if we have grass laid down, things like that, it looks more tolerable. And you can apply this to the trees as well, but this just helps in performance. You also have control over things like shadows. Like generally, you probably wouldn't put uh, shadows on the flowers, maybe not the weeds as well, um, because this can all perfect a performance to what you're actually doing. Um, generally, in projects, I leave uh, uh, shadows on trees because obviously um, it just creates a nicer atmosphere. Like if I, if for example, if I turn those off, um, we're going to get a very different feel of a scene here. You know, very sort of there's just no depth to it or anything like that. But you can see here, as I say, generally. When creating scenes, if you're not going to be interacting with any of this, then this is what you need to be using. This is you should be using the instance foliage, uh, st sorry, static mesh foliage to create an instance foliage. You can use a combination of the two. So if you said, well, I'm I want these to be my primary trees. These are my maple trees, but I'm also going to have some um, uh, redwood trees that need to be cut down. You can use a combination of uh, static mesh foliage and um, actor foliage so you could have certain trees can be cut down that can be scattered within this this procedural spawner so you're not limited to either one or the other but for general scene building you want to be sticking to the st uh, the static mesh foliage to create optim optimized scenes essentially um, for your games so hopefully this has helped and uh, do let me know what you think and what you'd like to see more of and great